this is a really big feature in Cinema 4D that can get really fun and sound really complicated really fast. So I'll try to keep it simple and to the point and get through this as an overview in a minute or two so you can understand what field forces are, what you can do with them, how you can build on it, how it changes your workflow, and get back to what you were doing. So fields were introduced in R20, and in R21, they go even further. So if you're not familiar with fields from the last version, just a quick update. Here in this project, I have some text, and it's scaling, rotating, and animating in by some basic plane effectors. And if I jump out of my camera, all that's happening is those spheres are moving from left to right. Nothing too crazy, but tried and true good MoGraph animation. Now, if I take a look at either of those and go to fall off, I can click switch to field. And in R21, rather than having fall off on each effector and changing the shape, now there's field. So I can do the same sort of thing. I can add a, a spherical field, scale that up. And if we move that back and forth, we can see it's doing basically the same thing. And the sphere has size controls, it has fall off controls. So you're probably wondering what difference does it make? It looks like it's exactly the same. Well, the big difference that was introduced in R20 with fields is you'll see that it's a different object in the object manager. And this was huge because now if we had different effectors or different systems of animation and we made it for one and we have some other words, and we want to do the same thing or copy it, it's an object now. It's not just buried on the fall off tab of an effector. So I can take that, copy it, and I have a copy of it, can make changes, move it around, make adjustments. And then for my other plane effector, I could drag that copy in and I can mix and match fields for fall offs, change them easily, copy them easily. So that was a big step. Let's get to what's different in R21. Well, here we have a similar idea with a MoGraph setup where we have a cloner made of a bunch of spheres and there's a plane effector to push some of these objects back in Z space. And rather than the fall off, now we got a spherical field and that's pushing them back. Cool, great, that's MoGraph animation. But what if we wanna take this further and bring it into other areas of Cinema 40, like dynamics and simulations, but carry over the same sort of system? Well, that's why the idea of these fields being this separate object in the object manager matters so much. So let's take that idea of this spherical field as an object and talk about how we could use it now with dynamics and in other areas. Well, let's make these spheres dynamics. We'll do simulation, rigid body. It's gonna default to apply a tag to children, individual elements, that's great. Let's turn off this plane effector for now and the spheres fall down, we all know that one. And let's just make a quick ground and just add our simulation collider body. So we get our standard dynamic simulation where our spheres fall, they bounce around on the ground and they have dynamic animation to them now. Well, what if we wanna use the same spherical field but have it act as a force in various ways to do things like push the spheres away, pull them towards an object, and not get too deep in the weeds about recreating a whole system, but just take our spherical field we already made. Well, now we can do that. If we go to simulation forces, these might look familiar to our particle systems of past, but now if we grab field force or any of these, let's just grab a tractor. For fall off, it has that same fields tab. So I can turn back on my spherical field, pull that into the fall off, move that spherical field around, scale it up, turn our attractor strength way up just for the sake of making sure we're seeing something. And now you can see that they're being pulled towards that as they fall down. So this is a really quick and easy way to work and change dynamics and get realistic simulations with them. You can change settings on our force objects. We can make it negative so they actually are pushed away from our object. And you can see what that's doing. And it's not just a MoGraph system, it's actually pushing it. So we could animate this spherical field. So let's try that real quick. Let's just go to coordinates, animate, and we'll have it at zero at the beginning and then just have it move around so we can see what's happening over time. So let's say it goes 
it moves in Z and X back and forth. And now we have this object that's moving and pushing those and affecting the force around those. So it's a big system that you can add to a lot of things. It works in a very modular way. This is just a tiny little idea starter of how forces work. I'll put together a bigger tutorial on it once I have time to wrap my head totally around everything you do, but it really works great for taking the idea of fall off for MoGraph animations, making everything a modular object, and making everything just work together in Cinema 4D in easier ways without every different type of animation like MoGraph and Dynamics having a totally different system of working. So I hope this was a useful tour of some of these features. As always, you can check out more motion graphics, Cinema 4D, and After Effects tutorials at motiontutorial.net, and be sure to subscribe at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter, I'm at Sean Frangella, or check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials. And be sure to check out some of those other videos and tutorials that are popping up in those thumbnails. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video.